Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gratzel here, and today we're going to talk about adjustment layers. So adjustment layers are a great way to take a photo or image that you have and make some subtle adjustments to it. Maybe you want to give it another color tone or you want to add some textures or gradient kind of overlays to it. Adjustment layers do a great job of that. Or maybe you take a photo and it was just a little too bright. So you want to adjust the lighting on it to make it a little bit more dramatic or just a little bit more accurate. Maybe it's overexposed or underexposed. Adjustment layers are how you will do that. So there's a couple places you can find adjustment layers. So if I go to my layers drop down menu, you can see I have new fill adjustment, or sorry, new adjustment layers. And here's all of your options uh, that you have here. So there's three sections. This first top section here all refers to light. So your brightness and contrast, levels and curves are very similar. Brightness and contrast, you it does the whole image. It's real basic and just kind of, I'm gonna either brighten it or I'm gonna darken it and then maybe add a little contrast. So it affects everything. With levels and curves, you have more control over the dark shadows, the mid-tones and the highlights. So you can adjust those subtly. Um, even in curves, you can get into color channels. So red, green, and blue, and you can adjust based on that as well. And then exposure is another kind of broad lighting adjustment where you can just adjust the exposure over or under on the whole image. This next section all refers to color. So your vibrance, how vibrant and intense are those colors that are in the image. Hue saturation, this is where you can actually adjust and change the colors and how saturated it is. We wanna really be careful with saturation because a lot of people think, oh wow, it's really bright and vibrant and saturated with color, but it doesn't look natural. So they're fun to use and they're great and they're good in subtle ways, but we wanna make sure you don't overuse it. Color balance as well as like an overlay, we can add a filter effect to it. Black and white, you can convert the whole image to black and white. Photo filter is another way to add a color overlay over to the whole image to give it a filtered look, uh, maybe a colder winter feel, something like that. Channel mixer and color lookup. Color lookup, I have found out recently, is a really great tool, uh, especially when you're doing compositing and putting a bunch of different images together. It's a great way to unify and bring an image together with a single color feel. And then this last section uh, is more the kind of artistic things, invert the colors, posterize it, create a threshold, add a gradient map, things like that. So that is where you can find adjustment layers. You can also go to your Windows drop-down menu and you click on adjustments and there's a panel of these same options. They're just in icon format on the side here as well. Another quick way to find these is in your layers panel when you're working with an image is that same symbol. See, there it is in your workspace panel. That's your adjustments. It's also down here and you got the same options. The only difference is they add three more at the top. These are solid layers, adjustment layers you can put on top. So a solid color that goes over the top, it hides the whole image. You can do a solid gradient that hides the whole image and a pattern. So when you're using these, you can use them on an image, but you have to use a blend mode to actually make them see the image below it. Otherwise it's just gonna be a solid thing over the top. So we're gonna talk about all of these. I'm gonna show you kind of how they work. So over here, you've got this image of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Uh, that we're going to work with and this is going to lead into a project that we'll actually do as well to kind of practice this but let's start with just kind of showing you how some of these work so let's say i do gradient right i'm going to pick gradient and you can see it comes up with a little gradient map here if i click on that it'll open up this gradient editor which is awesome i think this is kind of a newer feature for cc 2020 or maybe some of the newer cc rounds but uh, you can choose all kinds of gradients based on color so if you want an orange gradient you got a lot of options here if you want a red gradient, if you want green, so a lot of cool things you can do. Two color, right now this is just blue and you see it goes into that checkerboard, which means it's transparent. So it goes from light blue to transparent. So you can do that if you wanna fade something, but if you want some really cool, just awesome gradients, this works. So again, you can see if I click okay, I've got this gradient adjustment layer, but it covers the whole image. So in order for it to work, I'll click okay here. I have to go to a blend mode and click multiply, color burn, one of these. So it'll overlay that image. The other thing you can do too is also mess with the opacity, but that doesn't always work the best. But again, blend modes. So color light, that's kind of a cool effect, right? So do that and then adjust my opacity so it's not as intense, right? So there's different things you can do with that one. The same is true with pattern. This is kind of new. I was playing around with it. You can do like water ripples. If I click on that, there's grass, what I haven't explored yet is if you can import your own patterns. I'm assuming you can, and there's probably a way to do it. But again, with these, this is great. We've got this cool tree pattern. 
Um, but again, it covers the whole image. So in order for it to work, I'd have to use some kind of a blend mode, right? Now you can see that in there, the screen overlay. So those are really nice depending on what you're going to do. So that might be a little bit more unique to your project. Brightness contrast, again, very basic. You've got some sliders here. So I'm going to increase the brightness, decrease it, increase the contrast, decrease it, make it flatter, have more contrast to it. So that's how that one works. Levels and curves. Um, I usually stick with curves. I like curves a lot. What's nice with this uh, is you can actually add points and you can bring things up and make subtle adjustments to the, this is your lighter area and your darker. So I can bring these down and bring my lights down or increase the lighter values, the highlights, decrease the dark shadow. So you can see I'm creating contrast with more control than I would if I just moved that contrast slider. So curves are great. You can also click on this drop down menu and go right into your reds. So maybe I just want to adjust the reds in this image, I'll bring the reds up. I can do that with blue as well. So I can move those around. So this is curves are great uh, when doing really cool adjustments like that. You want to do some really cool color effects. Curves are really fun for that. Um, levels, like I said, it's kind of the same thing. It's just dark to light. You don't have as much control over color as you do in curves, but that works. And then exposure is, again, just a single slider. Here's your over, underexposed. And that's basically it for that one. Uh, next, we're going to look at some of the color ones. So again, vibrance, hue, saturation. So vibrance, just bring up the vibrance. You can barely see it, but see it's a little bit more vibrant. So maybe you've got a dull picture and you want to bring up the vibrance a little bit. Or maybe you have a real vibrant picture and you want it to look more vintage. You can kind of bring down the vibrance of it, kind of flattens it out. Super cool effect. And you can add more saturation to it. Again, this is where you have to be careful because oversaturation, right? Here's hue saturation. Oversaturating an image can make it look really bad. So you might think like, oh, wow, look how intense those colors are. That doesn't look great, right? It might look artistic. It might work for certain areas, but again, it's not always the best. What's cool about the hue part is you can actually change the color of things. So you can have fun with this. So I can make this kind of pink with green water and I can oversaturate it. So if you're doing something for like a cool project, like a graphic design piece, um, it's going to invert colors a little bit then you can have fun with it. But if you're doing just photo uh, editing, just to make it look more intense or have it pop out a little bit more, just be careful with those uh, adjustment layers on that. Click on, so I'm not gonna go through each and every one of these in detail, just kind of go through them a little bit. Color balance, again, you can adjust subtle colors. So this gives you a little bit more control, just the magenta and green, those different colors there. So again, these, there's no right or wrong way to use these. It's all depends on what works best for your image. So you might flip through these when you're working on a project and be like, let me see what color balance does. No, I don't like that. And I would delete these. I'm just, you know, making the visibility go away just for this demo, but you would delete it and say, that, that doesn't work. Um, so it's just kind of a trial and error. Black and white, you click on it, turns it to black and white, and then you can adjust the color. So we know the bridge is red. So maybe we want it to be a little brighter or a little bit darker. So I can use that red slider and everything that's red in the image will be adjusted. So nice little feature on that. Uh, photo filter. Again, you can add a little warming filter to it right now. I can do a cooling filter and you can see it does a little overlay with that. I can do just an orange overlay. So give it that kind of a vintage look if you want it to be a little bit cooler, have a colder feel. And then you can slide the density. How intense do you want that filter to be? Little to none, you can adjust it. Kind of like a little slider blend mode almost with that filter. And then we've got channel mixer. Again, this is your reds, greens, and blues. You can adjust those individually, play with colors. So subtle adjustments, more control with your color. And then you've got your color lookup. This is what I was telling you about. This is really fun uh, when you're doing a composite because right now I've got this 3DLUT file. That's kind of what I would click on. And then you get this drop down menu. If I click there, there's all these presets that are really cool. So drop blues. I don't know what that says. So it drops all the blues out of the image. So if you've ever wanted to see how they do that, where they drop the blues and just have one color, that could be a really cool way to do it. So I drop all the blues out of that color. An edgy amber, that's a little intense, right? Fall colors, right? So it adds a little bit of flair to it a little bit. It just kind of brings things together. So if you've got images for, or a design that uses in multiple images, right, from different photographs, different times of day, all that, you can bring it together, horror blue. Ooh, cool, that's great filter over like a movie poster design, right? So you can unify it by using some of these filters, which are really cool. 
Okay. Ooh, I like that one. That's a cool one. So I'll hide that. And then the last section right here is just kind of your artistic ones. So you can invert your colors by clicking on that. You can posterize it. So make it look a little more graphic. And then you can change the levels, like how much, right? How intense do you want that posterization to be? Your threshold. Not really sure what this does, but you can add some different effects. This might come in handy when you're doing like overlays, something like that, if you want to add some cool textures to it. That might work really well. Haven't used threshold very much myself. And then gradient map. This is very similar to the gradient filter we did earlier. The only difference is you don't have to use a blend mode. So if I just clicked on blue, the gradient map automatically kind of overlays it uh, to the image. Whereas with the gradient fill section in the first part, we, act, we had to actually find a blend mode for that. Right, so we can do that one and it kind of it maps it over the image itself it doesn't just the other one was just an overlay and it covers those colors where here it actually affects the colors so there's a little bit of a difference you can still do an overlay with it or a blend mode with it if you want but then you can in, decrease the opacity of how that works so those are different things so that's a different effect you get with a gradient map as opposed to that earlier just gradient layer right so those are kind of how the adjustments work, just a kind of a basic overview. Again, there's no right or wrong way to use it. You might spend a while on each one, adjusting it to get the look that you want for your design. So just play around with it, see what you can do with it, and have fun. Till next time.